If you haven't seen Baby Wren, this is Baby Wren. I never got to meet her as a baby. I mean, she's still a baby, but as like a little, a little baby puppy. Oh, that's a random picture of mountains. Anyway, um, so <laughs> I did this. I did this yesterday and today. This is on like, um, like uh, X-ray plastic mylar type stuff and oil pastel and the background has been there for I don't know how long um, it's masonite board and then there's like canvas here too so that was wild uh, I did another portrait using the same reference photo I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet uh, where did I put it it looks very different to me um, I think I'm actually going to just try legit painting it, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, I think this looks better. I don't know. The nose is kind of bunged. I don't know. It looks better than it did to me the other day. That's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I did some, some stuff to it. So I don't know when I'll get back into that one, but some art that I did this, uh, this weekend. It was kind of nice to do that. Um random stuff I guess I've been thinking again about like what did I learn today in the vlog and how I used to put so much of what I learned today in the vlog and now I'm not talking about stuff in the vlog as much the vlogs end up way shorter but now I've got this other segment this is one of those things that I've just been like throwing around in my brain and just like eh, is there a purpose to this whatever I don't know anyway I'm gonna start packing up um and head home it was cool that uh, peace war the world peace thing uh it was really cool to go and see that like public art installation um in Botterill park or whatever it's called uh that was that was tight i enjoyed that it that looked like a ton of work i really wonder the details about it. i wonder how many people were involved in it etc there is one aspect to it that i don't like and I don't know enough about it. And that's part of the thing is like, I would love to know more about it. How did the people come together to do it, etc. The thing I don't like is that it doesn't seem secular. There are a couple things there that make it look like it was produced by Christian people or either that or some Christian folk decided they needed to add to the installation. Um, when you go to it, if you go to it, it's really tempting to want to take stuff or leave stuff. It's, it, I should say, interact, move stuff, whatever. Like, I think, for me, it was tempting to be like, to interact with it rather than just interact by experience. But like, what if you move this over? What if you took that thing and put it over here? Or what if you came and added your own thing? And if it was just one Christian thing, I think I would have been assumed that somebody left it there. Even though I'm like, I was tempted to just like interact with it on another level that I just chose not to because I didn't want to disturb it other than just like the natural disturbance that would happen from walking through it. But um, then I saw another thing and I was like, oh, I'm really curious now about the organizers and the intention and purpose of all that because I'm not a fan of when there is public art like that that has been given. I don't even know if it's been given a sanction. I don't know how it would work otherwise. But like a display like that, that is. It's just, I don't know. It's just, unless you're going to come right out and be like, hey, everyone, come to our display of jesus and all his teachings that's one thing but it's it feels underhanded or subversive in a way when it's like look at this beautiful thing about public art and about like peace and love but the avenues through peace and love are heaven and hell in a christian sense and here's like a copy of this prayer that we're going to put here and here's a thing that says like whatever about jesus and i'm like uh it, it just it le I left a bad taste on my mouth honestly it's beautiful, amazing work. But I don't know if those were one-off things that someone decided to leave there or if they were by the organizers themselves. And then it makes me question the whole thing. That's just my personal thing. But it's still really worth checking out, I think. I feel like talking about this right now because it's 
on my mind right now, and I'm processing it, and I'd rather process it on a recording than process it alone in my head and then try to express that later. So, oh, this, um, this, this beautiful thing, beautiful aesthetic project, public art, sanctuary, expression of peace and love and unity and whatever else um, that Rebecca and I visited with Ren uh, called The Mirror, um, I was able to actually speak to the creator of it, not the creator, period, because um, I had some questions. I was really curious. Um, at first, it's it's just really overwhelmingly beautiful, and there's all these natural elements that are there, and then there's all these curious elements that I'm like, oh, wow, these are really cool, too. There's, like, you know, like, cool little stone pyramid gems and jewelry and all this other stuff and then there's just like prayers and scripture like christian prayer christian scripture like written on rocks and paper and whatever else and then you start to notice there's like strings in the trees and like bags and um paintings like on canvas and jewelry and just like there's a lot of things that i <laughs> It, 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 it sucks because, like, at first, I don't know, I got so sour on it so quick. And at first it was because, it, it's really interesting, this is how I want to talk it out, is, like, my first... shift happened when I started to see very specific Christian messaging. And it's talking about heaven and whatever else. And uh, so I was curious, are these things that were added by someone else, or were they there by the originator and the person who planned this and whatever else? Because there's also, like, the words heaven written, you know, uh, with rocks and painted purple and whatever else. And, like, I'm pretty sure that was the person who created this, right? Uh, sorry, I'm just looking for um, screenshots so I can quote things accurately and not... I need mean, it needs to be verbatim, um, and yeah, I uh, <laughs> um, man, it's hard to do this with my left hand. Uh, where the hell? There it is. Um, it it just I don't, I don't know. It just started rubbing me the wrong way while I was there, and then I started noticing about like, wait, well, what happens to like the animals down here what happens to the wildlife what happens to that when you've got bags like canvas bags like strung up in a tree and string and and whatever else and like you've got paper just like loose paper it's underneath a rock so it doesn't blow away and you, you've got litter you've got garbage you've introduced garbage to the environment because at first, what you see is like, oh man, there's all this beautiful use of the natural landscape of, of sticks and and rocks and just the amazing patterns that I'm thinking of. Just again, I didn't, I don't know when I would have thought of it, how long it would have taken me, if at all, if it wasn't for the fact that this is clearly not a secular venture and it's a mission. It is at first just this thing that you're in awe of this human creation with nature um but then it 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 it's not it, it becomes very obvious the more you look about this like oh no this is this is a christian thing and it's just like look christians can be nice and positive and whatever else and it's like cool you needed to disrupt nature to do that um, but again, like I, I, I compare this to Rust Rock Cathedral, and I think that one of the big differences there is it is secular. There's nothing in there that I've ever seen upon many visits that point to anything other than a secular venture. So it didn't make me even question the environmental aspect and the impact that it had. Um, there's a lot of elements of that that are not natural to that environment whatsoever but they're tied down. They are contained within the work 
for the most part. I think there's a few things here and there, but I don't see garbage and litter, strings and papers and anything else like floating around. However, but then I started thinking about that too. I'm like, no matter what, you are creating a massive disturbance to the wildlife, plant life, whatever. I guess it's the same thing in that area. And then I started to think, do I really care about that? Or do I care about it? Because in this case with the mirror, it's through this Christian thing. And I just need to clarify, okay? I I, <laughs> I don't want to like... I feel really weird about this. I feel really weird about having this discussion, but I'm having it anyway. This is where I'm at, and if I'm wrong, then I'll realize I'm wrong later or, or whatever, and, and then I'll have to learn. Um, but my questions weren't answered directly the first time, and they were answered with questions about me. Um, and then I had specifically asked, like, okay, but, you know, was this created in a secular through a secular lens like peace and love and through a secular just human lens or was it through a christian lens and the answer that i received was that i chose heaven on earth as what i considered to be the perfect words to honor the christian community of lethbridge the heaven on earth thing isn't the only thing there there are like literal words of like again script christian scripture christian prayer that are there but this is like specifically, I wanted to honor the Christian community of Lethbridge. Why? For what purpose? Why not just honor humans on a human level, completely secular, that anybody who believed in peace and love and harmony and unity and all that stuff could come to this space without being met with I'm annoying myself in a way by talking about it. And I, I, I'm, I, if, I don't feel on the fence, but I feel like I just got off the fence so recently that I'm like having trouble with it. But it's like, it just seems like a really colonialist thing. It just seems like, okay, you decided to come over here and disrupt all this land in the name of Christianity. That's what it, oh, but you put Oki on it. So it's okay. Um, you've introduced all these artifacts, all of these things into this, what would have been a natural state. It was a natural place. It was beautiful the way it was. And you have completely disrupted it. And I think that using those natural elements, again, aesthetically, it's beautiful. And at first, it was like, wow, I could see how this is like, um, whatever. And I think we're going to take the kids there to just have some teachable moments about and conversation because nature is something very much a part of them and that they they like exploring it and learning about it and whatever else one more than the other but it doesn't matter anyway the thing is that i think that it is a great learning opportunity because and we won't get into like the the religious elements and, and all that stuff or the colonialism or even that but it's like okay even if you are moving the mass amount of rock and wood and whatever that is natural maybe to that environment, you are still disrupting so much. However, I'm not a biologist. I'm not an environmentalist or whatever. Um, I'm not a scientist. The thing is that from my understanding, because I asked, was this sanctioned by the city? No. But it said, again, I need a quote verbatim because I don't want to mess anything up. Um... Uh, I'm in pretty close contact and good standing with the city. We have discussed some things, some adjustments even made, but they are generally very appreciative about it, all things considering. Which is like, the, the answer was, um, no, it's not sanctioned by the city, but the sentiment seems to be they've approved of it, and we've had discussions. Okay, that sounds like there's approval there. And why would there be approval for a lot of those elements? Now, again, from my understanding, from all the information I've seen, and the website doesn't even work, so I can't get information that way, but there's just this really, um, it's so unfortunate because, again, I can be wrong, and, and if I'm proven to be wrong, and I can learn from that, then that's one thing. But I've tried to do the research and specifically talk to this gentleman who I'm not going to name, it just seems really self-aggrandizing. It really seems like this isn't a monument 
for peace and love. This is a this is missionary work, and it also just seems, um, <laughs> like the thing is that uh, I don't know. It, I feel like there's there's good intentions, and then there's this, and then there's also just like. If you are knowingly going into the space to disrupt the environment, again, I'm thinking, like, maybe I'm putting too much into this. Maybe it's not really disruptive of the environment at all. How would I know? And I'm like, I'm just using my logic and intuition and, and my knowledge, but obviously I don't have as much knowledge as other people. So I'm thinking, like, okay, let's say you're just moving sticks and rocks and trees um, or, like, dead trees, like, like, stumps and stuff like that let's say that's all you're moving you're not introducing any of these other elements that are there which there's a ton of again paper canvas paintings bags string jewels um or just jewelry in general like there's a bunch of stuff um little sculptures ornaments uh lawn gnomes like there's like there's there's so much stuff that rubber there's rubber and plastic there um, I was thinking there's a rubber duck um, and I'm just like okay so let's say you're introducing all those elements or let's say you're not sorry you're not introducing all those elements but you are still displacing and interrupting and moving and then I think okay well again I'm not I'm not whatever you have to be to be an expert in that area a biologist a environmental whatever I'm not that I just realized there's someone that I could totally talk to about and I probably should, and I'll probably give you an update, because I do know someone who's that an ecologist. I don't, I don't know. But this is how ignorant I am about it. So I'm just using purely my logic and intuition, which isn't, which isn't very much. But I'm thinking if may, maybe I'm wrong, and you are just you're not even disrupting things that much because you disrupt things all the time. So I think about the love that has grown in, for nature within me that I haven't really had that for a long time. And mountain biking was my avenue to appreciating nature and finding the stillness and calm and the beauty in it. Now, obviously, I have a footprint. I, I, when I'm mountain biking, I've got this footprint, these two wheels that, you know, that, that's, I've got my tire tracks. I am obviously disrupting insects and whatever else, right? You can really go down the rabbit hole with how much disruption. And it's like, well, can we disrupt things if they're cool? Obviously not. There's t tons of things that are cool and that are still disruptive and we don't do them. And it's like, well, then what is this for and why is it allowed? And that's where my question goes. And it's like, yeah, it is, is the, the person that was doing it, right? Um, and it goes back to just the why, right? Because I think about like, again, I've said, I've talked about this before. We talked about graffiti, vandalism, public art how all those lines blur who gets to do what without consequence right especially in this city people are putting up these decals that say smile and and these happy faces um during covid times which was a christian organization that they paid for the decals they put them up on city property and the response from the city that i got was that they were just upset at me for calling and asking about it because the thing is they they weren't sanctioned by the city i was told that by the city but well who cares like they're uplifting messages okay so i can go spray paint love on stuff and that's an uplifting message so i can do that like no it's because of the people that were doing it and they had the money to do it right and it's like well i don't have money to buy a billboard or like I, so if i go buy vinyl decals that say love but it's in a cool font then then i can do that i can put that up wherever i want i can put it up on city property without permission can i really can i myself do that i don't think so um it's just, it's just it's an interesting conversation and now I, I i feel like again um we all have lines we all make allowances because i could just say i'm going to stay out of nature altogether or i'm going to live off the land with nature or whatever and i don't right but i there are people who do way more than i do to keep their carbon footprint and all that stuff to an absolute minimum and i don't i i have a gas powered vehicle whatever right like um so I'm not trying to be hypocritical, but when you take on this massive, this thing, this is a massive undertaking to do all this work, I would hope that 
someone was consulted in order to say, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I've been planning it for a while, or, or this is just a seed of an idea before I get to planning it. I really, this is what I'm thinking. Is that really going to disrupt this, the, the nature and, the, and whatever else in this area and the wildlife? Maybe that discussion was had, but as far as I know, it wasn't. It's nowhere in any of the literature, the articles that I've been able to find about it, and by the person himself, um, didn't speak to that whatsoever. So, and I had asked about like introducing these elements there, and the response was like, "Oh, well, the city, like, you know, we've been whatever I said before. I don't want to find it again and quote it again, but the quote is there." So, just wrapping up the vlog, I guess I'll continue to uh, discuss, you know, the uh, mirror. Um, I got some feedback from one of the posts I made. Uh, I also did talk to the biologist acquaintance who hasn't finished. Um, it, apparently, it's, it's really complicated, so they wanted to give me a full answer, and I haven't received the full answer yet, but um, the majority of it, I believe. But <clears throat> someone put it really succinctly about novelty. Because I've been just like thinking, like, am I just being stupid in the mud? Whatever. Am I just like making these judgments without any rhyme or reason or just whatever? And they had mentioned, like, no, like it feels just like a novelty to do it. Was like, and that was the perfect word. Um, and that that's. Again, to me, and I, I have that difference between Rustra Cathedral and the Mirror, especially with one being secular, one not being secular, but under the guise of being secular, and then also just how quick that person was like, yeah, it was me. Look at me. I did it. And um, that kind of goes along with the novelty thing, I think. And going to like the disturbing nature thing. So apparently... Um, it's not that, uh, I need to quote it, I need to, or I need to at least summarize it better while I look at the message. Uh, short answer is that the overarching environmental impacts are low overall, probably negligible for most wildfire, wildlife, not because the change of the landscape isn't impactful, but because of the scope of it. It's a small scar on the land, and so most species can easily adapt by simply avoiding it. Of course, this is subject to species. To a magpie or a deer, life will carry on. But to say that overwintering insects that needed those rocks and sticks as cover to survive the winter, it would prove far more impactful to those individuals. But to their population as a whole, again, it's probably negligible overall. Garbage is never a good thing, but considering there is garbage all over the city, I wouldn't find it to be any more concerning than everyday litter, which cumulatively sucks, but as a standalone incident, doesn't matter much. What I would find concerning is disturbance caused by an unusual level of activity in the area. Um, and then they said they're going to get back to me with some more information on that soon. And I guess that, that goes hand in hand with the novelty thing. It's like, oh, there's a novelty. Like, that's why we went to see it, right? Like, that's why I ended up there. I'm like, oh, what is this? Let's go check this out. Versus, if you left it alone, I wouldn't have had as much desire to go to that area we still would have gone out in nature. You know what I mean? We still would have gone to maybe Popson or, or Pavan or maybe the same area that day down in Bottle Road. We would have gone to the dog park and we would have experienced things in a different way that wasn't as much of a an attraction or a spectacle or whatever other than the beauty of nature by itself. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's. I feel when it, it feels weird when I'm like, oh, I'm still processing it. I'm like, it's just it's a thing, it's it's whatever. But it was an interesting thing, and I just wanted to understand my own feelings about it, especially because for some people, it's like a controversial thing. It was like, why am I feeling negative about it? And that I wanted to analyze why I feel negative about it. And part of it was the Christian element, so I needed to analyze that. And then part of it was like, well, wait a second, you're doing a thing, but it's not necessarily a positive thing. It just seems like a positive thing, and it might be doing more harm than good, but that doesn't matter because the aspect of spectacle and notoriety gained from it, and I think that's really not cool. But anyway, uh, wrapping up, wrapping up the vlog, um, I was able to finally get to some physio today because I didn't, I didn't end up working, 
And so there's like a drop in thing you got to go to and then they do an assessment and then you can make an actual appointment. So I was there for like an hour and a half and uh, I got some exercises to do, some stretches and stuff and, and kind of a plan to move forward with things. So that's, that's good. Um, and other videos this week. So there is a conversation that I had on, I believe, intelligence and um, what is being smart, I guess. Uh, so that's that's a thing. Yeah, uh, that was the last conversation I had. What is intelligence slash being smart? And then I had uh, three different reviews that I had done this week. I'm catching up. I normally wouldn't do them at this rate. But um, I reviewed three movies, uh, Quills, uh, which is a kind of like a biopic about the Marquis de Sade, uh, which is wonderful, one of my top ten favorite movies. Uh, 16 Blocks, which is kind of like an action-adjacent courtroom drama outside the courtroom movie, but it's really cute and actually surprising. Um, and then The Butterfly Effect, which, uh, yeah, Butterfly Effect. Uh, talking about chaos theory, kind of time travel-y. Um, I wouldn't say it's sci-fi, but some people might. Um, and that was that was a gooder as well. So uh, I think that's everything, and we'll see you another time. So I already wrapped up the vlog, but I'm going to add this on because I got more insight um, from the, the biologist acquaintance. Um, and so to finish off what I had mentioned before, uh, they said that depending on the amount of foot traffic for the installation, it could potentially disrupt the movement and use of the area by some wildlife. Um, it's possible it could prevent some animals from using the immediate surrounding area, but it raises more social concerns than environmental in the grand scheme of things. Things like why are Christian values imbued in this symbol of world peace when it's such a limited world view? Why do we feel like we have dominion over the natural world, that we take from it without a second thought to create something in our image, another concept based on colonialism? Rather than manipulating a natural setting to instill a sense of peace, why couldn't nature, just as it was, serve the same purpose? Why do so many people feel the need to add anthropogenic items to a natural setting? Why is something only beautiful or complete when it has an obvious human element? Uh, the tendency of so many people to not just accept nature as it is, um, whether it's intentional or not, seems that we've become so out of touch from where we came from that people can no longer relate to the natural world that shaped us, and it's heartbreaking. So there, there's, there's more stuff there that I definitely for sure agree with that were worded much better um, and filled out some of my ideas and added brand new ones. Um, yeah, so there you go.